Peace be with you, peace be with you, peace be with you. And this is a season we want if each one of us to be reconciled to God. Because we do believe that God is spirit and worship him in spirit and in truth. The verse for today, I give you a new commandment. Love one another just as I have loved you. So you should love one another. This is how everyone will know that you are my disciple if you love one another. So let us begin our worship song with the song, Being So Good. Yeah. 
long to have a good friend and so nicely she puts it in a song that lord you are such a good friend to me you know i the sentence itself shows us that we have such a good lord who can be so friendly and we need to offer our friendship back to the lord so over to you geeta let's hear the message for today hallelujah Yes, Lord, we want to thank you, Lord. You are the best friend that we have, Lord. Hallelujah. You are truly our Valentine, Lord. Lord, no one can love us the way you do, Lord. Such great love that you have demonstrated by laying yourself down for us, Lord. By dying on the cross for our sake, Lord. Hallelujah. You loved us so much, Lord, that you left your heavenly glory and you came down to this world, Lord, to save us, to redeem us, to bless us, Lord. Hallelujah. And we want to thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness. You're a faithful God. Hallelujah. Right through this life that you have given us, Lord, you have said, fear not, for I am with you, Lord. Hallelujah. Such a wonderful friend you are, Lord. Hallelujah. And we know we can count on you, Lord. No human on this earth can love us the way you do, Lord. And Lord, you excel in your love for us, Lord. Just, Lord, you being God, Lord. Hallelujah. You love us as your, your own, Lord. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord, we thank you, Lord, for having chosen us, Lord, to know you. We would have been far away from you, Lord, but your hand of love was upon us, Lord. You brought us out of darkness into your marvelous light, Lord. And you, you just don't say that you are God, but you say, Lord, that you are our friend, Lord. Hallelujah. We want to thank you, Lord, for this friendship, Lord, for this relationship that we have with you, a living relationship, not a dead one, Lord. And we want to thank you that each day you're with us, Lord, revealing yourself through your word, Lord. This day, Lord, we ask of you, Lord, anoint us afresh, Lord, our understanding, our hearts, Lord, our spiritual ears, that we would be able to hear you, Lord, in the spirit. And that we would not be just hearers of the word, but doers of the word, Lord. Thank you, Lord, Lord, for uniting us together. And we welcome you, Holy Spirit of God. We welcome your presence, Lord. For you said when two or three gather together in your name, you are there in the midst of us, Lord. We want to thank you for this time, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Once again, the Lord has brought us together on this Wednesday evening. And we are here with one agenda to know the Lord because it's uh, the desire of the Lord that we would know if we truly love someone. We would desire to, you know, meet with that person. We would desire to sit with that person, to talk to that person, to listen to that person. Okay, and how do we listen to God through his word? How do we, we know all of us talk to God, but how do we listen to God? It's very important to know that it's through the word of God that we are able to listen to the voice of God. He has declared his heart. It's a love story. His, uh, this book uh, called the Bible is not just a story book. It's not a story book. It is a love letter. A letter that God has given to man. This is the way I love you. I love you with an eternal everlasting love. He's a loving God. So we go back to uh, uh, where we had left last time. We were in, uh, uh, in the story where the leper comes to Jesus. And he knows that Jesus. He has heard about Jesus, uh, you know, miraculous, uh, you know, power. And he knows that Jesus is well able to heal him. But is Jesus willing to heal him? That was his problem. Because he was so rejected by society. He was so rejected by his family. He was thrown out. Being leprous, he was thrown out from his family. You know, and, and, and lepers were kept in a separate place, like I said last time, in a secluded place, far away from the rest of society. And here was, the, was this man. We don't know how he came into this, this crowd, but he come, comes here with a desire to be healed and wanting to know whether God is going to heal him, whether the Lord is willing to heal him. And the Lord has 
such love, no matter where we are, how deep we are in our trouble, how deep we are and far away from God, or how deep we are going through our problems and situations in life, the Lord is well able and not just well able, he is willing to bring us out from that pit. And that's what Jesus, which normally people will never touch a leper. And it's written here that Jesus touched him and said, be well, be healed. And in that moment, he was healed. Leprosy is like, you know, we can say sin is like leprosy. You know, it is such a thing that eats up our system. You know, the Bible says none of us is righteous. No, not one. All of us have a, a you know, sin nature. And the Lord came to set us free. Like the Lord came to heal that, you know, the Lord healed that leper. You know, the Lord heals us not only of our sickness, but first important thing from all of our sin. So the Lord came to set us free from sin. Now we go to a, the next portion. We see it in uh, uh, Luke chapter 7. <clears throat> now, when he concluded all his sayings in the hearing of the people, he entered Capernaum. Now, these are not just stories. They're life instances of, of, you know, God recording all this through holy men of God. God gave, the Bible explains for itself, who's the author. Now, there are many human authors in this, in the, uh, the entire Bible. But the real author is, is, you know, human hand was writing, but the Holy Spirit was working through them through the ink, to write, uh, through the parchment, whatever they were writing, uh, you know, uh, with uh, whatever ink or whatever they were using those days. So the, it's the uh, Holy Spirit that impressed upon the hearts of these people. And that's how they, you know, each of the Gospels, they correlate with each other. There's no, uh, uh, what do you say? Uh, there's uh, uh, nothing that you can say that... Uh, is uh, does not match. You know, they are all in sync with each other. They have not copied it, but they have written their own perspective of how they've seen Jesus, each of them. So here was this man, a centurion, you know, a centurion is a, uh, is a, you know, in Hindi, they say Subedar. He's a, he's a commander of the uh, Jewish army having 100 soldiers under him okay he's a very influential person he's a rich person he's in charge of uh, uh, 100 so, uh, you know soldier uh, soldiers and a certain ser century servant now this man and servant now he's he's such a uh, big person he's such a rich and influential person but he has great regard for one of his servants who's very sick on the point of death it says here and the centurion servant who was dear to him was sick and ready to die. He was having such an ailment that uh, he was now ready to die. He was coming to the end of his life because of the ailment that he was in. The sickness that had plagued him was so severe that it was leading to death. So when he heard about Jesus, he sent elders of the Jews to him, pleading with him to come and heal his servant. So this man... See, which also shows that we cannot, uh, we can come to Jesus with our own personal need as well as the needs of others. So this shows that the Lord uh, is open to all of His, you know, the uh, creation. He's open to each one of us human beings. So this man is uh, has come with a request, having heard that Jesus is a great and mighty healer. He has done great miracles, so he has come with a request and he has not personally come here it says he sent elders of the jews now he knew that jews the jewish people were very close to jesus so he and this man this uh, uh, centurion is not a jew he's a non jew he's a gentile you know so he come uh, he approaches some of the elders of jewish elders and he uh, tells them could you please go on my behalf and please tell Jesus? Now, let us see what he tells. Okay, he sent elders of the Jews to him, pleading with him to come and heal his servant. And when they came to Jesus, they begged 
at him earnestly saying that one of the one for whom we should do this was deserving for he loves our nation and has built a synagogue. So this centurion is not only a very rich person, not only a very influential person, but a very loving, kind person in his heart. And he had regard for the Jewish people. The Jewish people normally, you know, uh, according to the tradition, they don't mingle with Gentiles. But now this Gentile, this un, uh, this non-Jew, has done a lot for the Jewish people. He built a synagogue. So these elders are coming to Jesus and telling Jesus, not that Jesus is unaware. See, Jesus is aware of everything. Who the centurion that he's coming, going to come to him at so and so time. He's going to send people, you know, on behalf of him and all that he's aware of. So, but these people are explaining to Jesus that this man is a person who loves us and who has erected a synagogue for us. And Jesus went with them. Now, their request was, uh, you know, that this man wants his servant to be healed. So he may have thought whether Jesus is going to come to my house because I'm a Gentile, because Jews and Gentiles don't have a uh, proper relationship with each other. Jews were separate. They didn't mingle with uh, Gentiles. So this man would have wondered, is it, is it possible that Jesus may not want to come to my house? Okay, that must have been in his mind also because of this uh, background that we know about the Jews. And when Jesus went with them, now Jesus did not say no, didn't say anything. He, his desire was to go and heal that servant. And when he was already not far from the house, the centurion sent friends to him, saying to him, Lord, do not trouble yourself, for I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. So this centurion said, you know, sent a people, he did himself go to Jesus, but he sent people to tell Jesus, Jesus, don't come to my house. I'm not worthy that you come under my roof. I don't want you to come under my roof because you are such a, uh, you know, such a great prophet. Now, he wouldn't have known that Jesus is the Messiah, that he is the living God. He wouldn't have known that. But he knew that he is a miracle worker and he's, uh, he sends this message when he sees Jesus coming, uh, you know, towards his house. He sends this message to the people saying, Jesus, I'm not worthy. None of us is worthy. What this man says that he's unworthy. Yes, all of us is uh, are unworthy creatures, but the Lord chooses to love on us. The Lord chooses to have his you know, his uh, glory shine upon us. It's the Lord's desire that none of us would suffer in this world damnation and, you know, uh, being separated from him because of our sinful nature. And so what happens? And then they, uh, the centurions and friends to him saying, Lord, do not trouble yourself for I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof. Therefore, I did not even think myself worthy to come to you. So this man, he knew what it is, his like, you know, that he's an unworthy person. In fact, like I said, and the Bible also says that none of us is worthy to come before the holy and righteous God. He's superior. He is absolutely all holy, all powerful God. And none of us has that, you know, worthiness none of us is worthy but he has made us worthy that's what the bible says the sinful people that we are god has made us worthy to come before his holy presence so what happens here therefore i did not even think myself worthy to come to you but say the word now look at this man what he says but you just say the word and my servant will be healed for i also am a man placed under authority having uh, soldiers under me and I say to one go and he goes and to another come and he comes and to my servant do this and he does it now this man this uh, centurion you know he knows the power of the word okay he has understood the power of the word the authority of the word you and I also ought to understand the power and the authority of the word of God, okay? Word of God is so powerful. That's why Jesus says, you know, 
It's only by the word that we are changed and transformed. It is by the word, my word is spirit and it's life. So this centurion, by experience, being a centurion, being in that position, he knew, he, uh, he knew that his word has the power, his own word among his soldiers has that power. When he says to one servant, go do this job for me, he will do it. When he sends another servant, do this, that, that servant would do it. So he had he had knowledge of the authority of the word. You and I also need to develop this, uh, you know, this understanding that the word of God is so powerful. It's actually the word of God is uh, Jesus Himself. Actually, when we speak the word of God, we are speaking God's word uh, in this in our situation. Like because God has given us a, uh, that authority through his word, to command things to happen, and it has to happen. So what he says, I say to one, to one servant, go, and he goes, and to the other, come, and he comes. Now, Jesus marveled at this man's faith. Now, this is speaking about our faith. How do we uh, appear before God? See, uh, nothing really moves God but our faith. It's very important. Without faith, that's what the Bible says, without faith, it's impossible to please the Lord. And how do we develop our faith? Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. The word of God is very powerful. He says, heaven and earth will pass away, but my word will not pass away. His word is uh, powerful. And then what, now Jesus has heard this thing. And what uh, Jesus uh, says, uh, when Jesus heard these things, what this man said, he marveled at him and turned around and said to the crowd that followed him. Now the crowd were most, mostly Jews. So Jesus has is very impressed by this man's faith, by what he is, and this is coming from a non-Jew. So he's, he's telling the people around, I say to you, I have not found such great faith, not even in Israel among the Jews. I have not found this type of faith. So the Lord appreciates when we believe in him and trust in, it, trust in his word. When he trusts in his word, that's when he begins to operate in our situation. Now this man had the faith, you know, First of all, he knew that he was unworthy. We all need to know that we are unworthy. But God has made us worthy. None of us is great. Okay, God has made us to stand at that place before the holy and righteous God. And, uh, and faith is the very, very important thing. We need to develop our faith. In this day and age, where the world is becoming evil and more evil and dark and more dark, there's so much of pain in this world. You and I, who are people of faith, can rise up and stand in authority using the word of God. Because God has given us that, that word, that authority in his name. He says, all heaven and earth, you know, all authority in heaven and earth is given unto me, says Jesus. And I give it to you. So go, you know, and he says, go and preach the gospel. Go and take the message around. Go and live a lifestyle that is worthy of your father in heaven. Okay, and here he says, I say to you, I have not found such great faith, not even in Israel. And those who were sent, returning to the house, found the servant well who had been sick. Now that uh, the centurion servant was on the point of death. But the faith of this man connected to the healing that Jesus released to that servant that the centurion asked for. So faith you know, is something is something that we need to develop. Faith in the word of God. Faith in the Lord Jesus. He's our maker. He's our creator. Who knows us better than him? He's the only one who knows us. He knows all our pains, all our struggles, all our failures. And he alone can give us victory. He says, come to me, all you that labor and are heavy laden and I will give you rest. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light and I will give rest to your souls. Our rest and our, uh, our uh, peace comes only from him. There's peace in no other place. Though, you know, Satan will show different directions. You know, do this, do that. You'll get, you know, you will get peace or you'll get whatever. But those are all temporal things which do not last. But the peace that God gives us the creator gives us 
is a permanent peace. So in our situations, number one, we need to know that with God, all things are possible. Whatever be our situation, with the Lord, all things are possible. He can make a way even through the wilderness. Second thing we need to know is walk in faith. Never give up on the Lord Jesus because the you know there is no other truth anywhere else. Jesus alone is the way, the truth, and the life. And we can come on behalf, you know, of people, you know, for any anything we can just come before the Lord. And He's a loving God. He's a loving Savior. Yeah. So we end here and we just. Ask the Lord that we would develop in faith. The most important thing in this life today is to walk in faith. Walk in the knowledge of the Lord and walk in his wisdom. Lord, we thank you and we praise you, Lord, for this time in your presence. We thank you for your word, Lord, even as we learned from the centurion, Lord, that he had faith that, Lord, that was so uh, powerful, Lord. Hallelujah. And you appreciated his faith, Lord. Teach us, Lord, to walk in faith. Teach us, Lord, hallelujah, to seek after you, Lord, to listen to your voice, Lord, because we know that faith only comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. Teach us, Lord, to meditate daily, not, Lord, not on a Sunday or on a Wednesday, Lord, but daily, Lord, that we come before you, Lord, and seek you through your word because your word is life, Lord. Give us that, Lord, that, uh, that desire, the hunger for more of you, Lord. Hallelujah. And just like St. Paul said, I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Not I, but Christ lives in me. And the and the uh, life I now live, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Thank you, Lord, for your amazing love. You are able to love you only because you first loved us. Amen. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Over to you, Jesus. Amen, amen, amen. And it's so nice to know that right now also we can renew our belief just like the centurion. Just like the centurion. I know sometimes we struggle, you know. We struggle to know whether we should call the Lord home because of all the mess we have created. But the Lord is for everyone. You know, if he can walk amen. into the centurion's house, he will walk into our house also. But we need to have that belief, you know. And thinking about it, why would the centurion want to pray for the servant? You know, he's got such a good heart. You know, a great mm. man like him, having thousands of soldiers in his army, to, you know, be so considerate about that one weak servant. For him, even if ten servants die, does not matter because in the war, that's what happens. But no, to be so concerned, even of that servant, definitely makes us also think about it. That there are so many people that we meet. They will come and tell us that, you know, I'm suffering from this, I'm suffering from that. We must have that heart like a centurion and pray to God on their behalf. Amen. Rather than, you know, think of going and sharing the gospel with them and asking them, no, you got to be convinced. No, even if we pray like the centurion. And this is the time I think elders like us can take that... Uh, authority to pray for uh, most of the people who come to us and trust me every third or second person comes with a particular problem yes. and like you said there is nothing impossible for our God because only we know the value of belief because it is said in John chapter third, uh, 3 Everyone who believes shall have eternal life. Amen. 
John 16 says, uh, 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave us his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him, it is whoever believes, shall yes. not perish, but have eternal life. So it is very important for us to know the value of Jesus. Because the only way to God is through Jesus. And Jesus does not care whether you are a centurion or whether you are a servant or whether you are a leper or whether you are a sinner, you are a warrior, you are anybody. He has stood for people who are stoned. He has stood for people so much so he stood for all of us and he gave us only life for us. Amen. So I do think that we need to be like the centurion. You know, the message is so good, so powerful that I think I need to promote myself to becoming a centurion and feeling that, you know, I have an army of people who I don't know, but at least I can pray for them. And how difficult was the centurion's conversation with Jesus. It was so friendly. That's what the song also says, no? You've been so good to me. You've been like a friend. Jesus was so open to your conversation, no? He does not say, I want you to dress like this. I want... He's ready to hear you out. I think we also must be ready to stop looking at people and explaining our doubts or problems but think that Jesus is in our midst. Why? Because he's in our midst. We should know it, believe it and claim it. And I believe that Rosie is healed and whomsoever is struggling is healed right now with the message that you have given. The last week the leper was cleansed. This week so many people will be cleansed from whatever sickness that they are going through. If you believe, you will be healed. Amen. So, anything uh, that you would like to speak on, Rosie, we've got five minutes to glorify and testify for the Lord. Yeah, Rosie. Priyanka, would you like to speak up on something? You would like to thank God for something that has happened. Even if it is small, the minute you thank, that small thing becomes a blessing and it becomes the greatest thing in the world. So, I'll tell you one thing. It is miraculous for my family also. But I was trying to to like learn my vehicle, my car, for many years. And I never drew road pe, kabhi nahi chalai. And today I just said, my I told my father that I want to drive. And he was so scared. I said, you have an insurance. No, I don't have an insurance because of my um, past illness. I never got any insurance from any company. So I said, you have insurance. You don't worry. I, I don't have insurance, but I'll, I'll drive today. And I sat and I was driving, driving, taking a turn, taking reverse parking. And how come you're doing? On the first day you're driving, in traffic you're driving, fearless, like you're driving from ages. And I said, I don't know. I just prayed and I said, let's go. Mm -hmm. you know? Because there was a small emergency in my family and I had cars, but I couldn't drive. It was a very critical situation. And that moment I decided I will drive, but I was so you know, full of fear. But today morning, I just said, no, I'm not going to fear. I'll, I'll just pray and I'm going to start. And I really did it. For one hour, I was driving and my father was just looking at me. And most amazing thing, my father, every morning or anything goes wrong with me, I fight or you know, get angry. And he says, uh, you are reading Bible, then why are you behaving like this? You become like Jesus now. You just become like him. You are reading it, reading it. And he was against all this few years back. 
and now he is you know telling me that you know you tell me also what are you reading and i don't know how it is happening but few years back he was angry man on this now he says you you reading now all this good good like this he saying yeah it's a wonderful testimony praise god yeah today car ka thing was miracle and it was like he that how come you doing this i was in, like mujhe pasina aa raha tha my first day pe and you are just driving like a professional no i said yeah. and i just I have really seen priyanka you know the day you want her to stand up and talk she goes completely blank but today mm. when i am seeing her speaking up on screen god will do wonderful things with you priyanka when yes. he is with you he has seen me <laughs> how oh, i was i couldn't speak all, i couldn't tell my name all things yeah. are possible because geeta and me we have driven i think more than 1000 kilometers to villages and come back with uh, once the tire bursting and so many things happening and two children and geeta and me but god was there Amen. 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 Yeah, I I very much uh, you know uh, I identify with you, Priyanka, on this because sometimes our fears overtake us. But faith is something that dispels fear. If we say, "No, Lord, I know I'm going in Your name," and like you said, you prayed, so that was the reason the Lord gave you the boldness to do what you wanted to do in driving the car. He Praise makes God. the path. He makes the way. He makes it all right for you. Yes. So we are off with one minute, and yes. we are now ready to join into the next session. Because in the next session, we are going to be fellowshipping with each other, understanding how to get closer and closer to the Lord Jesus Christ. Who is going to be our friend? Yes, I know, Rosie. You are very eager to speak up, but we have shortage of time in this meeting. But as soon as you restart, oh. we will be able to get together, yes. understand one another. More importantly, understand how the Lord yes. Jesus Christ works for you and me. Amen. Yes, amen. Amen. amen.